This is the new Bridge 10.2 Max Plus. Bridge sent me this keyboard to try out and review. This is a keyboard case with a trackpad for the 7th and 8th generation iPad. When I first got this, it really reminded me of the netbooks back in like the 2010 era where everyone had like these small portable Windows laptops to like answer emails, do writing. Like it was the stereotypical like writer in the coffee shop computer. Bridge and Otterbox recently announced a partnership and this is a byproduct of this partnership. Uh, it's got the Bridge keyboard and trackpad, but the case is that hard shell plastic that you would come to expect from Otterbox. The iPad snaps into a case and it fits pretty snugly. It's not gonna pop out on you without some kind of a little bit of force at least to get the iPad out. Then you can take that case and then slide it into the keyboard part. So it makes it really easy to detach the iPad from the keyboard section. So if you only wanna use the iPad as a tablet, you can slide that out. When you want the keyboard and trackpad, you can slide the case part back in. And it's a lot easier than some of Bridges' other keyboards. I find like their uh, line that they have right now for the iPad Pro to be really hard to take in and out of the keyboard case. Like I mentioned, the case itself is all plastic. It doesn't feel premium in any way whatsoever, but it's hard shell plastic, so it's meant to more to design to protect your iPad than to look nice. Typing on the keyboard is actually quite nice. Now, it's not a full-size keyboard, obviously. The iPad is 10.2 inches. They're limited to the iPad size as to what keyboard they can attach to it, and that does not grant a full-size keyboard. Typically, I'm really bad when it comes to these like shrunken down or smaller keyboards. Uh, I've got big hands, so I usually will like hit the wrong key or hit two keys at the same time. Uh, but I found this one to be really usable. I made some mistakes, especially at the beginning before I got used to it. Uh, but after a few days, I, I think I was, I was pretty good at it. The keys themselves feel a lot more stable compared to Bridge's previous keyboards. They're, they're not as mushy as the other ones. Now, they're not as solid as something like the Magic Keyboard on the iPad Pro or even the Smart Keyboard Folio. Those keys are solid, they're not mushy at all. These are a little mushy, uh, so if you care about that key feel like me, uh, I, I use mechanical keyboards a lot, uh, so I really care about that key feel, that key press, and, and when it's really mushy, I don't, I don't care for that. On some surfaces, this keyboard slides around a lot. There's no rubber feet on the bottom, it's just the plastic. So the table that I have right here that I'm sitting at right now, when I was working with this keyboard case, if I bumped it in any way, it would just slide. And that was really annoying. It feels like if you could have put some rubber feet on the bottom of this thing just to kind of prevent that from happening. It's got the same key layout as all the other bridge keyboards, function row up top. Uh, on this particular keyboard, if you long press the home button, you can get Siri as opposed to the lock button on stuff like the iPad Pro and the new iPad Air. It's also got all the media keys and all the other usual suspects. But I did have an issue. Uh, the dictation key doesn't work at all for me on this keyboard. Uh, I can press it all day long, long, hold it, whatever, nothing will happen. But if I double press control, which is a keyboard shortcut for any iPad uh, to get dictation now, uh, if I double press that, it works just fine. So part of me thinks they shouldn't have even put the dictation button on this keyboard because you now have that double press control option to get dictation. You don't need a dedicated dictation button, uh, but it's not great that there is a physical button on this keyboard that just doesn't work. And actually, this is the second 10.2 Max Plus that I had sent to me. The first one Bridge sent me, the trackpad didn't work at all on it. But the fact that the trackpad didn't work on the first one and now the dictation button doesn't work on the second one, as the kids say, that's not great, Bob. Uh, I actually don't think any kids say that. In fact, I'm probably the only person that says that, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's still not great that I've gotten two of these and that there's been hardware defects on both. Speaking of the trackpad, when you get the keyboard, you have to go and download an app called Bridge Connect and you have to go through and update the firmware on this keyboard. Hopefully in the future, it ships with this firmware so you don't have to go through this process. 
it wasn't the end of the world. It really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, it's just like a lot of steps that you have to like get it paired, uh, update the firmware, unpair it, reboot. It's just like, I just kind of want to just pair it and start using the device. But when you do the firmware update, it unlocks all the multi-touch gestures, just like you would get with something like the uh, Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro or iPad Air. So this means you get two fingers scrolling, four fingers swiping between apps, uh, four fingers swipe up to go home, all those different kinds of gestures. I will say the trackpad experience is okay. Uh, and I'm saying okay and not bad, and I'm giving Bridge the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, Third-party mouses and trackpads with iPad OS, for whatever reason, do not seem to work properly. I've paired a lot of different mouses with my iPads and stuff, and things like the Logitech MX Master 3, like a, a mouse everyone seems to love. I've never heard anyone complain about that mouse. Um, I have issues with it on my iPad. Like the scrolling is just completely off. It does it just doesn't work at all the way it should. And that's been my experience with this bridge trackpad as well. There's been some lag and glitches, especially when it comes to things like dragging and dropping. So if I start to drag a file or something like that, a few times, not all the time, I don't even know if I would say half the time, uh, but a few times it would just freeze and I would just kind of lose that drag and it would either get dropped wherever it was or get snapped back to where it was. It, it, it wasn't a great experience. I found myself getting kind of frustrated and just resorting to touching the screen, which, okay, that's fine, it's an iPad. But at the end of the day, there's a trackpad here and I wanna be able to use the trackpad. For stuff like scrolling and moving the insertion point, it was actually, it was perfect for that. So if you're a writer and you want something to, you know, scroll through your document or move the insertion point, this is fine. But it seemed to be like more intensive tasks. I don't even think that's the right phrase, but I think you guys know what I mean. Uh, like dragging and dropping and stuff like that. That seemed to be where it kind of fell down. I also couldn't get the two finger to do second secondary click to work consistently. I think I got it to work maybe three or four times and that might have just been me pressing long enough uh, because if you long press or two finger click basically does the same thing in iPad OS. Uh, I, and I just couldn't quite get the two finger click to work right on this iPad. And before anyone asks, yes, it was enabled in settings. Just talking specifically about the trackpad, there is no way I would be able to use this all day long for my work. Uh, I, I would find myself getting frustrated. Uh, how I ended up using this device, because it's on this base iPad, uh, the base iPad I have here is a seventh gen 32 gig, so it's not big enough for me to edit videos on or do any of my creative workflow. What I was using this for was answering emails, writing some notes and outlines, kind of research stuff. Uh, we kind of have like this little pond at, at my complex here and there's like this picnic area. So like I'd go out there and set up and what's nice is it's just close enough to my place that I can still have Wi-Fi access. Fantastic. Um, so I'd set up there and I would answer emails and do some stuff like that. But ultimately, if somebody was just like, okay, this is the only iPad you could use, I, I'd be like, nah, no thanks. I, I, I can't, the trackpad just doesn't cut it for me there. So some key features of this product, uh, it charges via USB-C, which is kind of a bummer, but also a good thing. I, I know, let me explain. So this keyboard case is for the seventh and eighth gen iPad. That iPad charges via lightning. So that means you need to have an extra cable around in order to charge this keyboard. Now, the good news is I charged this exactly one time. I've had this thing for, I think about three weeks now or right around three weeks. I charged it when I unboxed it and I haven't needed to charge it since. So if you're going on a trip, like a week long trip, if you charge it before, you should be fine. But also it's 2021, most people are gonna have a USB-C cable in their bag. So I don't think it would be that big of a deal. The keyboard is also backlit, which is great if you need it, but it's going to drain the battery faster, so just keep that in mind. It also has a Gen 1 Apple Pencil holder, which is great because I've completely lost my first generation Apple Pencil. Or maybe I gave it to somebody. I, I don't know, but I've lost it. I don't know where it is. If you need a cheap, small companion computer to carry around, this would probably be a good fit. 
Now, the thing to keep in mind is the trackpad. You're not going to get amazing trackpad support. It's fine if for scrolling, it's fine for moving the insertion point. But like I was saying, for big tasks like drag and drop, you're gonna wanna resort to touching the screen. So you're just gonna wanna keep that in mind. But if you're somebody that's nostalgia for the days of the netbook, this might be the modern alternative to that. So like I was saying, this works with the seventh and eighth generation iPad. Those start at 329, but that's for the 32 gig model. Nobody should buy the 32 gig model. It's basically unusable unless you're going to keep everything in the cloud and only going to use a couple of apps. Well, mm, like a handful of apps. For, for 429, you can get 128 gig model. That's the much better route to go. And then this keyboard costs $129. So for $460 to $560, you can get a pretty solid writing setup. I think if you are somebody that primarily works from a desktop computer or something like that, and you just want this to walk down to your park and work outside or, you know, just kind of get away from your desk and answer some emails or something like that, this would be perfect for that. So I'm curious to hear from all of you, what is your favorite keyboard? Mine is the Code Mechanical keyboard. Like I mentioned, I like mechanical keyboards and this one's my particular favorite. I just got a custom keycap set for it. So that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and have a great day.